tonight on The Roundtable. It taps into that recess, that child part of you that likes to play. The Teen Phoenix, the host of Maze Arcana. Wow, this is happening. This is part of the zeitgeist. Ivan Van Norman, author, game designer, and GM of Foreververse. C kind of what makes the, the gaming space so special is it doesn't require much to dive in and enjoy. And Matthew Mercer, renowned voice actor and dungeon master of Critical Role. But wait, there's more! You're the best. No, you you're, the best. The best. you're the best. Oh. You're the best. You're the best. No. Oh. <laughs> Where are your nerds? I'll drink to that. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Yeah. That's so funny. You know? I feel lucky to have met you guys when I did. And at that same moment, I like I found all these other people in LA who were just like you, you like D&D. &D. You also like You smell D &D. of dice. We should all D&D &D together. But it was like in that weird moment, it was like five, seven years ago or something. About seven years ago, yeah. <laughs> so we've all been doing this separately and we all had our own communities, but they were all little satellites floating in space. And it wasn't until recent years that they all found connecting threads and The internet. You know. The interweb. Uh, if you will, yes. Yeah. We'll go with that. <laughs> Even five years ago, like this was not at all, did not have the momentum that it has right now. Mm -hmm. It was just insane. Like I, I specifically remember my first Gen Con, and, and first of all, just being amazed that so many people are there for tabletop, mm -hmm. board gaming, role playing game, and all of that. But if someone with a game was coming in 2015 and wanted to go find a publisher or one that has somebody looking at their games, they probably wouldn't have too much difficulty. Like, they'd be like, okay, yeah, come in, we'll take a chance on you, you're new. Now if you brought a game to Gen Con, it's like, well, what did your Kickstarter look like? Yeah. Did you bring in six mm -hmm. figures? I don't want to talk to you. But I you know? love doing it. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's in, in a similar way to other forms of media, it's, it's just become that much more of a passion project. You know, no one goes into acting because it's a surefire you know, way to make a good living. Right. It's something that you have to be drawn towards, and occasionally, if you work hard enough and meet the right people and are prepared when the opportunity arises, right. you can make a career out of it. Because there is no luck, it's just opportunity meets preparation. preparation. I keep yep. hearing that. For you but wait, tell me more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> I remember the first time I met you, Matthew Mercer. <laughs> it was a jolly, velvety, Saturday afternoon. I love Velvety Saturdays. It's yes. my favorite guy. They're soft and they're smooth and they're silken. And I remember, I actually remember very specifically the first time we came into it, you were like, hey, do you want to come play in the run? I knew nothing about you. In fact, I didn't even know anyone except for I think Satine was at my table. Mm -hmm. yeah. She was the only person I knew. And I remember nothing about that game. <laughs> nothing. I don't even remember who I was. The only thing I remember was that fucking troll voice you did. And it was so, it was like the time, because you were you were pretty much just doing the classic DM voice and it was the first NPC we ran into and you just switched from like GM to troll and like it was like someone just clicked it on and I was like, oh shit, this guy means business. <laughs> yeah, this is a thing. I'm glad that that was your reaction. Most times when that experience happens, people go, oh, uh, I just, that's, I gotta, <laughs> yeah, it's great to meet you. I, uh, I got yeah, no, that's allergic to people who are crazy. I Did know. you ever do meetups or anything like that? Like seven, five years ago, when like mm. your first, my because I remember my first LA D and D group was actually when you were doing D and D melt over at Meltdown. Yeah, you know when you were starting to bring your your friends who I liked had playing this games. Wild idea. <laughs> I was like. Keith Baker made this game, and I like all these people, and I want to meet more people who are like, I don't know, I feel, I mean, it's called Celebrity Charity 20, but really it's just uh, working professionals in Los Angeles, yeah. because we all have the same, similar schedules there, and the same There mindset. was no celebrity role playing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that, was not a, that was not a term that existed, so. Yeah, but like, I don't know, it was just a fun way to do it, but mostly it was like, I like to play games. So even making that charity event was a game. Getting four dungeon masters to play at the same time and then live streaming them all at the same time when there wasn't even live streaming. Like we tried to yeah, make that up. It was pre streaming. And it broke. Yeah. You were there for the first one. I was there time. Yeah, for the first one. Yeah, it was and awesome. it was 
chaos. Yep. <laughs> well, they, that, that was the first social experience I've had with multiple games running simultaneously. Up until that point, all my games have been like small, single, yeah. localized. You know, either through friends at a dinner table or invited to a home game somewhere. This was the first experience I had with multiple people and multiple groups running the same adventure. So it added this weird like, competitive element between the tables, <laughs> or at least like a comparative element where you were like listening, like, oh shit. Oh, They're already there. They're already there. We gotta hurry up. We gotta just get there. <laughs> Which was kind of fun. But also, we got at the end of the adventure when we all got together. We all got to compare and contrast how yep. different yep. our stories were yep. and how they ended up. And that what was like a nice little encapsulated example of how role playing games are such a weird, diverse, and strange experience every time. Which is yeah. funny because a lot of that same experience that you're talking about, most of the time that happens at the convention scene. Yeah. It's on a much larger scale now. Yeah. Uh, I've been going to conventions this year, and it blows my mind. They have insane. epics. Have you? Seen these epics? Yeah, yeah. There's one that was like 80 tables. Yep. Like, Jeez. yeah. And they're all, and they're usually like giant wars of its like, and it's it's amazing to kind of see the scale that people are bringing into it, and like the maps, there's conquered territories. They build the things. At uh, OrcCon, the, this guy built this giant airship with like sails and it was like this yep. big and it had clouds that had lightning lights mm -hmm. in it. It's kind of cool to, it's kind of cool to watch like the, the gaming culture at large because it's kind of been surging in recent years that there's a lot more companies, small independent oh, companies yeah. whether it be through Kickstarter and different, you know, crowdsourcing products are able to produce mm -hmm. very niche and specific tools for game masters and players yeah. to kind of enhance their experience, make it easier to put all those things out there for you to use yeah. in the space. It's weird because it's um, it's role playing is obviously not a simple activity. Yeah. But in the same way, we're making it even more complicated by the accessory. The same way that like something simple like jogging, we have like Fitbits and like earplugs, and it's like we can make jogging a very complicated activity <laughs> with all the accessories if we want to. Someone yeah. needs to like put all those different apps together and make them work together. You know the audio, and then you'll have your. I'd like to see like, the licensing deal on that one. <laughs> yes, there's a um, little, little bit for you, a little bit for you. <laughs> yeah, my my business part of my brain just like had a seizure as you were talking about integrating all those apps. <laughs> It'd be a beautiful thing, and I think eventually yeah. we'll have that uh, to a certain degree. But overall, c kind of what makes the the gaming space so special is, and versus other forms of media, is it doesn't require much to dive in and enjoy. The bells and whistles might get crazy. There might be elements, you know, accessories and peripherals that get intense to the point where you're like, okay, we've uh, we've overreached a bit far here. We need to step it back a bit. But at the core of it, it's dice, paper, and your friends. And even as elements of you know paper or dice or sometimes friends can <laughs> can be taken out of the equation and still have a good time. Because at, at its core, it's still just one thing. Yeah. It's your imagination. Yeah. And I've gotten questions from fans who would look at like you know these these elaborate map setups and accessories and stuff like that, and like I can't afford that. I don't know how to do that. Or like can you know uh, so I don't know if I can run my game. And you point out you don't. Have to do any of that. Yeah. Draw it on a sheet, or don't even draw it. Just set dice on the table and show spatial awareness, or just describe it. Yes, because that's how you do it. <laughs> you don't need gaming paper plus giant $150 minis to have a visual time to have fun. Exactly. It's, it's um, you can still have a wonderful birthday party with an eight-hour gaming session and do nothing else other than just stack a Jenga tower and play a game of Dread. Yep. And there is. Yeah. So much merit to that. I'm a firm believer that, uh, it, and I had this question come up at a, at a panel three years ago where they asked me and a bunch of other panelists, what to you is the meaning of life? And when first we were like, whoa, that's a, that's a big question to throw on us here. And everyone was like, I don't know. And I sat there for a second and went, I got it. To never lose your sense of play. To me, so much joy and meaning of your life can be derived from never ever letting yourself let go of what it was like to play. Yep. As a child, as an adult, regardless, and so much of society tries to strip you of that and tell you otherwise, that that's unnecessary, that that's an actual like hurdle to progress and be a successful person through your life. And society, I think it's the opposite. Relationships, yeah. people that you're in it with, like they, t they seep that into your head and then you're like, oh, this person that I'm really close with is telling me I can't play anymore, yeah. and that when I do play, it's wrong. Yeah. And there's so many facets of play that you can enjoy. Role-playing games are just one of them, but it's one of the ones that gives you permission at the gate mm -hmm. to lose yourself and not worry about the rest of those social confines and just dive in with both feet and have fun. With people. With other people. And what's been marvelous about this recent resurgence in tabletop gaming and, and these communities that are rising up and growing and thriving in this space is I'm seeing 
uh, spaces where people of multiple generations are coming together. Yeah. Old school, you know, Gygaxian chainmail yeah. gamers to the, you know, 19, 20 year old something Tumblr kids all at the same table, all sharing an experience and enjoying it together and becoming yeah. very close friends through that. You know, gaming is back because people need that interaction. Face to face. Yeah. I, actually, I've, I've, I've uh, had a lot of conversations on this too. I think it's a, it's a cultural return. Um, to, to the core of, of what we need as people, which is person to person interaction. Yes. Um, it's video, satisfying. Yes. This, this, yeah. I love video games. I grew up on them, and I will, I, I will, I work in them. It's my career. You know, <laughs> it's, I, I will never ever speak ill of the genre. I love it. Um, but when you have an entire generation now that was raised on that as your mainstream form of interactive entertainment, yeah. it builds a sense of 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 isolation. And anonymity yeah. as well too, because online gaming is so much about anonymity nowadays, yeah. and it's like you don't know who that person is on the other side, and they're frustrating the hell out of you if you're playing competitive first person shooter games or whatever. Uh, but you know, there's not that like, even WoW was, you had an avatar, and you know, and you grew around that avatar, but you didn't even really know who that person was, and, and that, but that, I would say almost weirdly, MMORPGs kind of started to connect the dots. Yeah between, okay, anonymity, an avatar that I can kind of relate to, to, I want to, like, yeah. I want to talk to you. Yeah, it's the cyclical, the cyclical nature of, of, of you know, gamer culture, coming back to the experience of being at a table with friends or being on, online face-to-face -face via Skype and playing together uh, with your voices and with your imaginations. That is That ties back to kind of the, uh, the, the tribal culture of humanity. And it, it's actually relatable because like, I love Dragon Age a lot, mm -hmm. but I love making the character. Like I'll spend so much time <laughs> making the character and shifting its face yeah. and then putting, you know, making all the things. Right. And so a lot of people from this younger generation who the, all they know are video games and character building that way, they're like, oh, wait a minute. I can sit around a table with my friends, make up stories or get guided through a story and have this character, like the, it is relatable. I mean, it yeah. all comes back. It's the hero's journey, man. That's it is right. the hero's journey of entertainment, and it's beautiful. And the hero and it's are games. And the heroes yeah. are games. And the heroes are games. Yep. Yeah. It's, all, it's almost <laughs> counterculture when you think about it, because so much of, of mainstream media and, and uh, American, let alone global culture, is based on consuming the new updates of technology, the new you know iPhones and the galaxies, right. the new mobile systems, the new right. VR technology that's emerging. It's amazing. Oh my God, we're getting closer to Kurzweil singularity. Holy shit! <laughs> and then you have people that are like, "That's cool. I kind of want to just get back and talk to people face to face again." Right. GMing a game or or hosting uh, a tabletop gaming experience is it's a gift. It's a gift that you're providing it's for other gift. people. You're, you're 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 setting a space and saying, "I appreciate everyone at this table so much." Here's my thing. Yeah, yeah. I made this for you. Yeah, enjoy. <laughs> yeah, and and it's true. It's it's a beautiful thing. It's, it, 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 I'm sure this is some. This is not the first time anyone has ever said this, but like you make the game the way that it should be played. Like everything you do, it's like if there was ever a handbook around making Dungeons and Dragons or making just GMing, it's like you do it the way the game should be played forever. So, yeah. I'm really bad at taking compliments, by the way. Um, just close your eyes. Yeah, be fair fine. enough. No, I, I. I but but to me, and this is something I want, I want to stress as well, every good GM is only as good as their players are willing to invest in that story. Absolutely. And I feel blessed that I've had so many people that I've played with that have been willing to step into that same space and create with me, because it is ultimately a collaboration. And it's easy to be like, this is a great story. Thank you, Mr. Game Master, for doing all the work. And it's like, there is a lot of groundwork in that. Right. But it's it's everyone that makes that, and that lends to having good players in your game yeah. that are willing to, to take that baton and run with it. Play with you. Yes, right. yes. and yes. be a part of your story, not just a listener to your or story. Or trying to break it. Yes, so, oh, fuck. Okay, um, I have a confession, uh, Matt. Um, I oh. snuck in on your, your Gen Con, um, Critical Role game that you ran out oh, of the shit. Theater. I didn't know you came to that. Yes, I did. Well, I, I, um, when we met up in the after party and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know if there, you were there for the actual game. I, I was there for the whole game because I had, I had kind of had this stigma around watching too much Critical Role 
of like not wanting to be overly influenced by kind of how you're doing your game oh, yeah, and totally. how things are. And it's like, I, I enjoy playing with you, but I didn't want to like have your, I didn't want to look at the critical role and be like, okay, well this is the direction Matt's going, I need to go in a different direction. I wanted to have like a sincere, especially since we're on the same channel. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's kind of that. So I took that Gen Con moment to be like, the, the rumor was like, okay, well I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive in and I'm gonna be a viewer for tonight. Like I've watched you on channel on, on you know, on the occasions in which I'm, I'm, I'm allowing myself to watch it, but like I'm gonna be here tonight and I'm gonna be a viewer for what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, uh, I fucking lost it. I lost it so hard. Like the and it wasn't the story was great, but like the audience, the people who were there and your presence on stage with your group and just I mean I was there with like people next to me and I won't lie I was mostly watching them as much as I was watching you. And looking around and peering, I was on the second story balcony just looking at all the people who were around and just, it was, the, it, you, could, you could eat the tension in the air. It was, like, it was like a juicy fruit that people were just watching it drip down their mouths. And it was intoxicating. It was intoxicating what people were feeding into it. and it's like there's this study of energy of like how people do things in mostly in religious ceremonies it's like buddhism is a very insular like you you the energy that you put into it is all baked and it's like it's it's in a single it's all it's inwardly focused christian revivals it's like it's all going up and then mass is like everything's going to the altar yeah. it's like everything's focused you were mass dude you were a mass, and the religion was D and D. It did things to me that I had to spend like days reflecting on and figure out what was going on. And it wasn't just oh, how can I do that? Because that's bullshit. But it was like, wow, this is happening. This is part of the zeitgeist and part of the world. And you essentially created. <laughs> a a visceral experience, and that's kind of what I had to imagine in a weird way, like what the what the shows are. But this was so much more real because they were all there. Yeah, yeah. it's all a new experience, and it's maintaining perspective on that. Sure, you know, I mean, understanding that that these moments are baffling in many cases and wonderful and so many more but also understanding that they are that not because of me or the people but because of the community sure. because of the people that are there the people that that have found a common interest in the narrative that we're telling and not just consuming it but taking that experience and showing it to other people to create their own and you know have their own adventures and their own stories and then using that to inspire other people to create their own adventures and stories. If, if I've done anything with my life, if I die tomorrow, I'll be largely happy with the fact that I've had that an effect on you and other people like you. I, I feel very fortunate that I have so many, not just like great players, but great people that surround me to help create this space where we can all be so supportive of each other and produce such a positive energy output to a community that then takes it and disseminates it amongst themselves and their peers. And it's, it's I don't know how, Fuck, I ended up in that sort of position. Mm -hmm. But to your testament, by the way, by both watching the games that you've run and getting a chance to play with you, um, you run an incredible balance between both uh, setting a narrative scene beat to beat that keeps it moving forward at a pace that doesn't lose both player and viewer, but you're also, and, and this is to me the, the key to a good GM, and both you guys exemplify this well, because um, it's not just the player listening, it's the GM listening and being open to every player's goal, every player's intended action, every person that's trying to accomplish something in the game, taking all these bits and pieces and then very quickly deciding, how can I accomplish all of these and yet it yeah. have yeah. it feel natural, have it feel like it, I already prepared for it. 
and and That's the key word. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's the smoke and mirrors aspect of GMing yeah. Yeah. is is making making everyone feel like. Oh, how the fuck did they prepare for all this? You're like, oh yeah, we're, I totally had all this geniuses. ready. I have no <laughs> idea what was happening. We figured it out. Yeah, but, but you do it so <laughs> fucking well. Talking with all the people who have been at this round table, it's been like turning the inspiration machine over and over again. So. That's and awesome. That's <laughs> also, and, and speaking yeah. of that fact, that's kind of why this tabletop gaming culture is one of the healthier. Geek cultures out there because the competitive element is so minimal, and it's more about a collaborative raising all ships type circumstance. We've had people at this table that all come from what you consider competitive online circumstances, but we're all just eager and excited to share with each other what we've learned and learn from each other. Right. Take that back to our respective places and promote each other. Right. And there's very few forms of entertainment that would ever <laughs> consider doing that shit. Are you kidding me? <laughs> like that, 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 that is like bottom line bad yeah. business That's when you think true. about That's it. True. But that's that's also what makes geek culture so special is where we find the importance of what we're passionate about more important than our personal gain. I've had so much fun playing with both of you, the experiences I've had, and I'm hoping, based on the conversation we had earlier about how busy we all are, that we all get the opportunity as the years go on to make sure that we allow us some scheduled time to yep. play together. Pinky swear. Right now Let's on do it. camera, so it has to be real. Yeah, oh, this is there there it is. Hey. <laughs> More games with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Bless this yeah. situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all wet. <laughs>